could also read these as well. Yep. And we did. And then others have asked. So the thing grew not by plan or intention, but rather in response to your request for public feedback. <coughs> then, of course, we heard, well, these are anonymous, and you only sp and, you're, and Jack Falvey's voice is speaking. Well, that's not true. <coughs> Uh, it was not intended that way. It was intended to give the board and you some sense of the community. Because there's, 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 a, there's a feel for it. I mean, there's, right. there's part, of, part of the uh, source of it. Right. And other, others from, I mean, many can I get emails can, from a lot of other people too? Many people cannot come here at 11 o'clock at night. <coughs> and so the idea was to try and give you some input prior, or without this kind of a format. So uh, in the interest of moving this thing along, I have just about two and a half, three minutes and then we can respond back and forth, because I would like to give you some ideas uh, that may be of some value. Um, first of all, uh, I spent 25 years as a member of the Housing and Redevelopment Authority uh, reviewing plans and projects in the airport area, so I can identify with the degree of difficulty that, that, that you people are faced with on the Woodmont project. It's not a small thing. There's a phenomenal amount of detail and issues to be covered, and going around the periphery is, is fine, but I'd like to make some recommendations. I'm not opposed to all that's in the plans, but rather I would like to see the process of approval. The process of approval of this project has to represent the residents of the town, many of which rely on this board to be informed and act on their behalf. So what I, um, what I would like to propose is I could hope that the applicant could step back, look at the core area where they're going to begin building, because they're not going to build this all at once. And then if they could request a master plan, a, a planned unit development 100 acre master plan on their core unit, that would be something we could get our hands around. So if this project is going to take 20 years to build it out, I think it's very impractical to try and give them an overall approval for a 20-year project in one vote in a few months before the town. So one of the elements that you really should consider is, can you break this thing up? It's nice to know the overall plan, and I think that's wonderful, and they've made a, a marvelous set of presentations. And it's nice to tweak it around the edges. But there are issues. If one portion could be dealt with on its merits without a huge residential subdivision on the peripheral, without highway exits, without helicopter landing approaches for hospitals, and all the town road reconstruction issues that will have to be addressed eventually if we can just get to one core element and look at that core element as one single PUD. This is the first time we've done one of these planned unit developments, and frankly, Everybody has expressed the feeling that this is totally overwhelming and I have to agree with them. So if we wanted to break it up into a number of planned unit developments, understanding their whole plan. I'm not asking them to change anything, but merely to take the part that they're going to work on first and it, they're not going to start everywhere. And why don't we address all of the issues in that plan and then go on to the next one. So these approval processes could go on for 20 years, not be done in 20 weeks so that they can go from there. So I don't recommend that they abandon any parts of their proposal, but rather they allow everyone to look at one phase, knowing that other phases will be addressed. Let me give you an example. If we're going to look at high density, mixed residential commercial construction, let's do it. Let's look at the implication of closely spaced inhabited buildings, some with businesses on their ground floors and separated by alleyways with rear courtyards and overnight parking. We don't have to go to Portsmouth or to Boston to have this kind of building or to look at this kind of construction. Manchester has this right now. To ask the fire chief from Manchester to tell us what the issues are that he faces and given the chance if he had to build those kinds of buildings again, which he can't do because they're 100 years old, what would be the issues? How big should the alleys be? Should we allow uh, residents over businesses and so on? And, and what are the fire safety issues there? What are the fire safety issues to high density with buildings 8, 10, 12 feet apart when one building catches five and six go at once? And we don't have that in Londonderry at present. 
So if we had this core area to work with, then we could get into a lot of these issues. To try and cover a 600-acre plan in a single master plan, I believe, is totally unrealistic. Big mistakes will be made. So if we take a manageable phase and know the related plans that go around it, then we can see what, what happens in that manageable phase and then grow and build out from there. So my first thought would be think in terms of doing a single 100-acre planned unit development, knowing that the rest of this is on the come, and let's see how that works out. If, if the, and a developer could select whatever portion would be appropriate, and then we could go for there. But to seek one um, blanket approval on a master plan in the plan unit development then says this is essentially what is going to be allowed and done for 20 years. And I don't think that, that, that the board should commit the town to 20 years of construction on, on a single submission uh, of this magnitude. Far better to break it up. So that's yes. the statement that I'd like to make, and I appreciate very much the time to have done so. Yeah. I know I've talked with Tim and Andre about, you know, breaking it down into smaller pieces to, uh, to handle. Because o over 20 years, I mean, even look at our own town master plan, you know, we've changed it anywhere from five years to seven, eight years. <coughs> and right now we're starting the process of updating our 2004 master plan. So we, even that would be an evolving process. And there's going to be different boards sitting here, and there's going to be, you know, you know, people that are in their 20s now, with their, you know, in 10 years, they could be sitting up here. And their thoughts are going to be different, and how they approach it, it's going to be different and everything. Uh, uh, yes, I got a, a question. Uh, you can stay right there, Jack. It's from, uh, from, from uh, Rick, Rick, Rick Shellman. This is an important um, misunderstanding. The approval of the master plan doesn't allow the construction of anything. It's only when phase one subdivision or site plan is approved, which could be 50 acres or 100 acres, at that time, and when that is approved, then construction can commence. The way the master plan PUD is worded in your ordinance, it is a rezoning. It doesn't allow you to build anything. What it does is it gives the developer the right to come back to this board probably for 20 years with lots more detailed applications, traffic studies, you know, all the other studies you're going to request. And those are going to vary. Uh, a submission this year would be one thing. A submission five years from now, there'll be whole new issues to be addressed. Staff will have new ideas that they want to have addressed. So it's very important, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but it's misunderstanding the process, fundamentally. I think, <clears throat> I, think I read the, um, the ordinance the same way you did, and I agree. What you're asking the board to do is to rezone the entire area first. Correct. Then after the board rezones everything, and therefore you have the right to put six houses on an acre, you can then come back and go subdivision at a time with that as a maximum. And I think before we rezone the entire area in accordance with this plan, we should think in terms of rezoning one portion of it first. And then let's get some experience with the builder in that one portion. So rezoning the entire project area certainly would be a, a, an element that you should request. But on the other hand, I don't think it's wise for the board to rezone the whole area and then go into subdivisions because essentially you're making the decisions up front. If you rezone everything, what can go everywhere? as opposed to, and also that changes all of the, evaluate, all the evaluations of the land, all the land uses. So you're really working in an area that we've never been before. It's true. And so you have to consider the, the cautionary point of not rezoning the entire area first and then going back to do it subdivision at a time. Yeah. Andre? Um, the decision whether or not uh, the, the board uh, takes a holistic look or, or maybe, as Jack suggests, bite-sized, but I just want to make sure the board is clear on the fact that when you rezone the area, it's going to be rezoned based on the master plan that this board creates. I, I know Jack used the uh, six units per acre, but that could be different. That could be three units per acre, but the, that the board decides that uh, that fits into that master plan, and that's what the uh, area gets rezoned to. If it, if it if they come back and say, no, well, now we want six, then it has to go through the process again in order to get six. So I just don't want it 
uh, I don't just want the board to impress upon the board that whatever it is decided on the master plan, that is what uh, gets rezoned, not anything else. Because the PUD ordinance allows up to six units per acre, by doing a PUD master plan, the board has the ability to restrict that to whatever density it feels is appropriate right. for the particular project. So this because you rezone doesn't mean that you automatically get six the units. maximum. Is this whatever the board decides uh, through this, this iterative process that we're, we're undertaking, Whatever the um, the master plan dictates, or whatever is decided on the master plan is what moves forward. But when you do rezone, what you do is you set some bars. So, for example, a few minutes ago, someone questioned, well, does it have to be, Arthur, you questioned, does it have to be 1,300 units? And the applicant said, well, it's much better than the 3,600 units that are allowed under the PUD. So the bar right now is set at 3,600 units according to the plan unit development, which I think is totally unreasonable. Now, the question is, how reasonable is 1,300? We have no idea. We've never built 1,300 of anything in this town. So the problem comes that we're dealing in unknowns and, and speculation. This is but the ordinance part. as written will allow 3,600 units in this area, but they can't be built because of the topography and so on. And then economically, this particular plan requires 1,300 units on 600 acres of land, much of which couldn't be built on anyway because of the topography and wetlands and so on. So the actual density that possibly could be built is far less. So now all of this is now spread over the entire development, and there's just too many details and too many little bits and pieces. So we decide a curb cut here, but what about the helicopter landing zone for the hospital? Well, aren't how many hours are we going to spend before midnight? So if we could just bring this thing down to a manageable um, planned unit development, we could work on that, get that working and decide how we're going to do this, and then once we decide that, then we could determine what the other elements are. Okay, because I know one of the things that we, we had discussed was like, you know, just basic, basic zoning, but concentrate on the uh, high density area, yep. and, that, and that's where to, where we want to put our focus. Sure, let them pick the core and let's let's get into that. Yeah, and uh, I mean, there's several meetings that we, the approach we want to take is, is to focus on the uh, on the core. Uh, but, you know, there were concerns about, you know, the periphery and everything. And I think we've kind of got something established now on, on how we're going to handle that. And then, you know, we're actually starting to collect from the outside. We've got to work our way in, you know, and I think as we work our way in to the high density, that's where we, you know, or what we could do is start with the high density, complete that, and then decide what we're going to do on the periphery. Yeah. So there's two ways of approaching it. Could, it. it could be, you know, it, we could have a little bit on the outside, then really focus on the inside, then go back and look at the outside a little bit. You know, but why not let the applicant more. tell us how would they like to do it? Which piece of the pie did they want to work on instead of the whole pie? And I, I think that would be acceptable. But to take it in, in total, there's too many issues. And there's, there's thousands of issues, not hundreds. And, and, and so, so as you watch this thing evolve, we've never done anything this big, and it's totally unreasonable to, to really try to do it this way. So my recommendation is on a large, large project, break it up into a small portion. The ordinance allows you to do that. It allows for a 100-acre portion to be, do, to be set up as a planned unit development without rezoning the whole thing until we find out how the 100 acres works. And, and this is my personal opinion. This does not reflect anyone else's. I'm not speaking for a group. Uh, uh, Mike, when he come, uh, he can swap uh, spots with uh, with Rick. <laughs> no, you can stay there, Jack. <laughs> I just wanted to comment from the developer's point of view that your ordinance says a minimum of 100 acres to file for a uh, PUD. Um, I'm here before you, induced by your zoning. And I chose to put a 600-acre PUD in front of you. Uh, the issues will still be the same on 100 acres as it would be with 600 acres. The issue is, 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 its, is its appropriateness and its zoning. And what we're trying to determine here is what is its master plan. And then we come back to you um, on each phase as we determine that phase needs to be done. and. We go through the entire process of site plan review with this board based on the master plan. It's, it's really as simple as that. And if somebody tries to bifurcate the system, 
then the, then the master plan doesn't work. The, the inherent balance of retail to commercial to um, office to, to the residential, the matrix no longer works. You can't go to a bank and say, well, I'm going to do this, but I can guarantee you that that board's going to allow me to do it on this one next, and we'll make it up on this one because the heavy infrastructure goes into your first phase. Um, I can't do that. I can't go in good conscience to somebody and try to, try to pitch that or to sell that. But what I'm looking for is the guidance from the community to get through the process that you promulgated and that I'm here before you, rightfully before you, and to determine what is in the best interest of the community and what is in the best interest of the developer. And we've tried to be as transparent as possible. Um, I don't think there's ever been a process like this in the history of New England. And uh, I would, yeah, and I would like to uh, like to continue to work with the board and uh, and to proceed in the manner in which uh, the uh, PUD calls for. Uh, yeah, that's my I'll two cents. Uh, Jack wants to talk. I think I'll, I'll do Laura, <coughs> then I'll do Tony. The the issue is master plan at all, or master plan a small section. And I understand the advantage of master planning at all, but we've seen the whole concept. Now the question is, do we want to change our laws, master plan and change the zone in this entire area, which we can do bit by bit, or we can do it all at once. I don't think we <clears throat> have to do it all at once. He can still build his project one step at a time, but in phases. And he's still going to have to deal with the market a phase at a time. He may just have to plan them a little bit differently as to which phase he builds first. It would be nice if we could give him assurance that he could go on and have a 20-year project, but I think it's unrealistic for this town to commit to a 20-year project, to one developer, to one plan, until we see how this concept works, because it's a brand new concept, changing the whole town around, we should take it a step at a time. If we master plan the whole area, that's not a step at a time. Once we master plan it and change all the zoning, then we're committed. I th I, well, the way I look at it, we still, like our current master plan, we can, we can still make changes. And I'm sure there's going to be, even if we do, there's going to be changes. We, can't, we cannot go out and, and rezone re re the master plan. Once we, once we decide what the master plan is, that's zoning. You're going to change it as you go along? Uh, yeah, Andre? Uh, uh, the one disagreement I have with this is that, that you can. I mean, just because you master plan, is this means that you'd have to go back through the process again, meaning that, <clears> for instance, the, uh, the first the course section uh, gets approved, uh, and then a, a month later he said, you know what, we want to reorient it because the market has shifted. We want to change that master plan. That can be back before this board and hopefully agrees with the master plan, and then that gets uh, approved, and that becomes the zoning. So this is not a one-stop shop, um, one-stop um, process, meaning that if, uh, if the master plan is uh, slated to change, they will need to come before this board to get that change. And the, it will change at the site plan level as well. And the, the, the current package before you says that. If we came in with a site plan proposal that looked exactly like this area here, I mean, exactly, and it was, um, I don't know, 400,000 square feet of commercial and 400 residential units and a hospital. That would be a pretty big application. Oh, yes. And you think I'm walking out of here with an approval in one night? <laughs> <laughs> one month? Home, you know. Home Depot took a year. <laughs> I mean, no, but my point, my point is once, once, it's quant once something like that has been quantified and staff has got a lot of stuff to wrap its arms around and really analyze and perhaps have outside studies done and all the things that you do in a, as a normal part of your business Site plan review. gets done at that time. Those are your insurances, your, your, your backstops. And the mas again, the master plan itself, we've perhaps been too specific and maybe gotten, you know, with sh by showing all the streets, not just jumping to the blah blah diagram, Maybe it's gotten well, too specific because it's, it's generated a lot of specific questions that are really site plan questions. Right. That's Correct. Uh, I mean, I take the position that 
you, if you approve that very plan behind you as a part of the package, it doesn't give us the right to put a uh, curb cut at a specific location on Pillsbury. And I think Tim would agree. I would. That's correct. You know, it's just, it's a concept plan. And you have to prove at the point when you actually propose to build it that you've got the site distance requirements met. You've got, you know, all the things you need to do to look at a curb cut. Drainage. All of the technical issues that get reviewed when you start to do and move towards construction. Site That's when review. you do it. Site plan review is the ultimate is the ultimate review. And that's where you've got to come in and mitigate everything that you're proposing to the board. When we propose it, you dispose it. And it's really that that's how it works. Uh, what you're doing is giving us the guide to, to move ahead. It's just like any other zoning. What can be put on this particular piece of property? And then when people come in, they rely on that zoning. They come to you. They make a site plan presentation, and you review it, just like you did tonight. And you condition it. You approve it. You continue it until you have the information that you need. And that's, that's how the process works, and that's how I've always seen it. And I have to believe that's, that's how the PUD project should work. And just quickly, without getting into the super, super into the economics, um, this whole project has been characterized as a 679-acre project with a certain list of uses that's going to require many millions of dollars more of money to be spent to bring utilities here and whatnot. You don't do that for a 100-acre project. You just don't. Oh, okay, Tony, you got the floor. <laughs> You're very Actually. patient. <laughs> Actually, I just, I, Tony D. Francesco, one Cheshire Court. I, I just wanted to sign up for Laura's 55 and over with the 30-year-old wives. <laughs> 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 I think I think that's really I think that's really intriguing. <laughs> uh, those of the those of you that know me know that I've never been a management by committee uh, kind of guy, and and I give Mr. Kettenbach a lot of credit for going through this process. Um, I, I never would. Um, you know, if you put a kid in a candy store or you put a kid in a, in, a, in a toy store and you say you can have anything that you want, they can't do it. They get all confused. Management by committee, and, and Jack's an expert on, on, on this particular field, but it only works to a certain point. And then the boss has to take over and say, this is what we're going to do. And I think we're almost at the point now where, where the townspeople have spoken, the emails have, have come through, y you all have read your emails and you've, you've gotten the nasty phone calls and whatever. And I think we're, at, we're, we're almost at that point, and, and I'm not the one to make that decision, decision certainly, but we're almost at that point, I think, where it's time for the developer to say, okay, I have a, I have a pretty good idea what this town is about. I've heard more than I've ever heard in my life. And now I'm going to put together a package, give it to the planning board, and now the planning board is going to make the decision on where we go next. Because we could, go, we could do this for another 20 years before a shovel is turned. And I'm not sure that's why he bought the land. So, so. <laughs> we're going to get old together. You know? <laughs> exactly. So, you know, none of us is going to, at this point, none of us is going to be around to see this thing anyway. So, so you know, let's go. You know, build it and they will come. Let's get let's get rid of these cartoon drawings, and, and get some engineers in here and pull some stuff together. Let's get it to the planning board. Let's have you yay or nay some things, and let's go. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Andre. Uh, I, I'll, I'll get you. I got two things. Uh, first thing, with regard to the um, the issues that we just talked about regarding this, that we're really going to deal things at the site plan level is that. We still got a lot of things to deal with at the master plan yes. level. I mean, there's still that 10,000 foot level that we got to take a look at. And once we organize the master plan in such a way that we all are, are, are reasonably um, uh, assured that this is what we want and this is what we heard uh, the people want, then we still got to take a look at the traffic at the 10,000 foot level, even though it's going to get down to uh, the nitty gritty once we get to site plan level. And we got to take a look at the various things so we know in this particular process, we have to have some assurance, much like we do in the master plan process, that when we develop a, ma a land use plan, there's a transportation plan section that goes along with that. 
uh, we want to make sure that's um, that is complete and the same thing with the water and sewer all the things that we need to take a look at to be assured that boy if this were to uh, take place and this were to be built on the site plan level that it can work uh, my second uh, question uh, is more for Jack I just want to make sure that I have my information correct is that you sent you sent uh, me a, a CD that had two documents on it one a 79 page document and other one a uh, a 31 page the 31 page was a duplicate of most of everything in the page one I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything <laughs> um, there's a lot of information <laughs> there's another 60 pages that you haven't got yet okay um, right. <laughs> organizing this and doing away with duplication and trying to edit it for example the questions that Tim has um, been nice to try and address uh, were dated January 12th and a lot has happened I've got a lot more than that yes and, and a lot of, <laughs> but those questions Just were submitted January 12th and when there was no reaction and no use of those of that feedback we just continued so uh, as of five o'clock tonight later than your three o'clock submission I was getting stuff in you know don't forget this tonight and we can't cover all this so um, th this is not a comprehensive record I just want my question was simple is that am I missing anything because I understand the questions we in don't there. Want to I miss read anything. every page <laughs> yeah and, uh, I, well, I've so, read them too like, and, believe uh, me but I just want to make sure that again one was a duplicate of the other and I just want to make sure I wasn't missing anything parts that, of one are a duplicate of the other yeah. uh, unfortunately what happened was is, is the the uh, the word documents and the PDFs will only handle so much stuff that you can send by email and so at one point we had to stop and this was not the intent when we started all we're trying to do is give you a feeling if there's this much opposition to a plan that says we want the board to give us permission to build up to 3600 units by zoning and then we'll scale it down to what we think is reasonable 1300 economically still gives us a tremendous number of people coming to town still gives us the 2600 cars still gives us the 2600 new school children potentially so we're, we're off onto these big big issues once you master plan this whole thing according to the PUD then we've set the upper limit at 3600 units and the fact that that they're willing to back down to 1300 is wonderful but it might be even better if they were to back down and do their economics a little bit differently and perhaps build a different kind of project. But I don't want to tell them what to do. What I would like to do is say, can't we break this up into a number of different pieces and not commit to everything all at once? So one massive master plan, nice to see it, conceptual, all right? Don't approve a major master plan on conceptuals. Fine, we'll take it. They won't have to change a thing. Let them go and do a master plan for 100 acres of it, and then there's going to be maybe a little bit more risk for them to bet on the come, but then there'll be less risk for the town. And the town risk, I think, greatly exceeds theirs. Okay, uh, John wanted to speak, and then uh, I'll get to Laura next. Right, so, Mr. Chairman, um, when I was still on this board over a month ago, I, I made a request to you to make the staff to prepare um, the, the questions that have been coming in since I'm on Jack's emails chain. Um, and I kept sending them to Tim up until yesterday. And I think um, he has- I have 37 slides full of questions. And well over 100 questions. Of course, we're not gonna answer those tonight because it is 1130. Yeah. But I would make a request to you that uh, maybe Tim could, um, so that the public can view these They'll before be the tomorrow. next um, yeah. uh, the next meeting. Maybe he could put them up on the website um, I really do still believe in my heart that you know questions should be answered but I also think the PUD was designed as a mechanism to protect this town and I would urge you to protect this town that's your job I yeah. think you have a vehicle to do it I purely see this as a negotiation between as Tony said the boss and the developer and I urge you to be strong okay. thank you thank you John well, Laura I'm Laura Aronson. I live at 38 Boyd Road. I've been a resident and a homeowner in this town for over 25 years, so you could say I have a lot invested here. I'm not in a butter. I'm not even in the neighborhood, but I know, the, I know the area very well. I know most of the streets of this town. I've seen us struggle with growth 
with taxes, with road conditions. I've, I've listened to all of the problems that we deal with that accompany growth, and I'm extremely concerned about the scope of this project. And I'm here to voice my opposition to the sheer size of it. This was a diagram that I made based on some numbers that Jack had worked up. As you can see, if you connect the dots, if you have 20, you're going to, if you take 1,300 homes and you assume two cars per home, that gives you 2,600 cars. 2,600 cars, to me, is a traffic jam. We already have our traffic jams here. Yeah, I mean, we've already got traffic jams. I, I know how it is. Look at it from another point of view. 1,300 homes, two children per home. We know that we average more than two children per home unless it's senior citizen housing, right? Yeah, yeah we, we have to correct this. Uh, if, we had two kids, actual... if we had two kids per household, we'd have over 16,000 children in our school district. So how many do we have per house? If we were to have the worst, case, the worst case scenario that every single of these 1,300 units were four bedroom single family homes, based on the multipliers that are specific to Londonderry, the most we would expect is about 1,200 children of All school right. age. So let's make an assumption that we have 1,200 children. Are we prepared to build for 1,200 children? We have excess capacity in the school system of over 1,000 students now. So there's capacity to take 1,000 as it is. So, so, so we could handle that number of kids. So we may be able to handle that, changes. and I may be wrong on this count, and we're also projecting into the future. I don't have a crystal ball, and nobody here does. But I am aware that we want to build for future generations. My daughter, uh, who's in college right now, would like to continue to live in Londonderry when she finishes her education. I would like this town to be uh, a manageable and a decent town the way we have it right now. I don't like cars any more than anybody else does. I found their book very appealing. But I think that underneath the surface, when you peel it back, we're dealing with a, with a subdivision with some nice window dressing. And are we willing to go ahead and approve this scale of a subdivision? And that's what I'm objecting to. Thank you. Okay, thank you. One of the things that we've seen um, at, the, at the meetings that we're holding um, at Woodmont are young people who are coming to us and saying, can we get affordable housing here? Can we have fine lofts? Can we live here in the community? We can't afford single family homes, but we want to live in the home. We, we want to live in the town we grew up in. And is this possible in this, in this project? And our answer has always been yes. But, uh, well, and the other thing they want is a, a cool place to live. Okay. That's been come up a lot too. Laura? Sorry, is this an appropriate time for me to say something? Just a, I have a, just a, a recommendation or a question. It's a good time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I understand why you need to have the whole whole thing planned out at once because that's you've got to make a plan. That's why you're here. We presented this to you. You want to develop something more than 100 acres, right. and you need to have a plan. So I understand that, and I appreciate how responsive you've been and how quickly you've added things and changed things, and I understand that makes difficulty for people who are trying to follow along. But you really do seem to be trying to incorporate a lot of the things that people are talking about, um, and I appreciate that. I also share some of the sentiments that other people have expressed, that maybe it seems like we're, this is just starting to drag here at the planning board a little bit, and um, I'd like to be more helpful to the process, however it's going to ultimately work out. And I wonder if you come in and very politely present information to us, I wonder if it would be appropriate for you to come in with a short list of questions that we could attack each time you come so that we could just make a little bit more concrete uh, sure. process, uh, pro it's really late, <laughs> um, progress. We could, we could we could bombard you with questions as to, <laughs> as to density and, and what do you want to see. Uh, well, well, I mean, and, you've done this think, before, I think, frankly. I think, and, and I think we could refine that to to Just because if you came to, to us with something you. and we could answer, that way also people might have a specific thing to say about a specific sure. question you have to ask instead of the sort of more general far-ranging questions and comments that people have. Sure. Yeah. Um, where it does get to be um, overwhelming. And, and from a staff perspective, at this stage of where we're at in this process, we really wanted to concentrate on the land use at this point. Okay. As we really, I think, need to get some consensus from the board 
and some agreement from the developer that this is where the land use direction is going because that's going to be the base from which we then evaluate the traffic, the infrastructure, and everything else that's associated with this project. Correct. So we've been steering them the way that they've been going. Uh -huh. So and so you think are we now in a place where we can get a little bit more questions like so. that at, at each meeting? I, I know we've been gathering so much information and it is a huge project and a huge opportunity and with that become you know comes all this work and I think as, as long as we, we're given the information with enough time to review and come prepared yeah. to the planning board we'll be able to have a much more productive feedback from the staff level because we right. just haven't been able to do that and clearly you're willing I understand that I, just, I think it would be great so. well to, one of the things we can do is not <coughs> modify plans as fast as we've been doing them um, we can maybe get a, that would, maybe that would two, help maybe a two week ahead maybe we're time. having too much input that could be because things once things start changing on people, then they get very uh, uncomfortable. And uh, um, I think in our I next meeting, we of, of we'll here. meet. We'll meet with staff next week. We'll develop a format. We'll come before you with a more definitive plan and with a series of questions to ask the board, like, is this appropriate here? And yes or no. And then we can have a debate on it. And, uh, Move and try to move this process because we, we keep getting bogged down because of our desire to be transparent and the board's desire to be cautious because it is such a big process. We're, we're cautious. We want to be open and transparent also, yep. which, which may be too much. You know, that, uh, uh, maybe we could, we'd have to take a little more leading. Um, uh, Tim, I was wondering, do, do you think it would be more helpful if we, at a meeting, just focused on one or two areas it I, I think so we can get no. some fairly concrete answers I, I, th I think we've done input. a pretty good job the last couple of meetings at least on those peripheral w2 whatever's I think we've got a pretty good idea that you know we're gonna match density at the edge increase density moving in I think really the, the one part that I'd like to see feedback on more than anything else is probably the area they're showing is phase one which is that core mm -hmm. commercial mixed-use area because that that I think is really going to be key in terms of where they're going to start from a construction standpoint when this process actually ends. Yeah, so I think it might make sense at this point now that we've got some of the ideas around the periphery that we start at the core and then start working our way back out towards that edge. Joe. Yeah, Joe Green, 25 Mammoth Road. I just wanted to uh, remind you, uh, if I could respectfully, that this uh, back and forth here is very, very helpful. I think it's going to be great. But I think that needs to be secondary to the thing that we originally had planned tonight, which it's so late, I know we're not going to get to. But the people that have elected me and the people that have put you on this board have spoken. They've given you all this email and all this information. And Tim has put it together, okay? And we, I think we really, we can't push that aside and throw it on the website and just say, hey, here's, here, here are the questions we have. We really need to give the time that they deserve to be heard, kind of read, and kind of looked through. So maybe that's another workshop. Maybe that's something that you guys can do at home and kind of post to Tim. But I think they're deserving of some answers. I mean, because this is seven or eight months of charrettes, seven or eight months of Thursday and Saturday meetings, seven or eight months of uh, the townspeople really looking at this, this project. And yeah, some of them are, hey, I don't like this street curb cut there. I don't like that street curb cut here. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about main you know, and Tim has that put together and uh, after reading a few of them, I think they'd be very helpful to you to know what the town is trying to ask you to do. Yeah, because some of them we had answered. If we started on it in some of the January, January meetings, questions. some of them have been, been answered, but we can re-answer re them. But they're, they're not in the same order because I've interspersed them based on yeah, the topic yeah. categories. Uh, that's going to give you direction. I mean, that's, that's a, a, another yeah. piece that I think you're yeah, looking for is direction from the town people. Yeah, and, then th and then you can give direction to them back and forth. Actually, some of it will be answered as we develop the master plan. Some of them are definitely site plan questions that we have at this point no, no idea. No one has any idea. And the last thing before I sit down is when people get excited about things like this, the more answers you can provide. I, I, I've seen this myself over the past month that I've been doing it. The more answers that we could provide, and I've only gotten the answers from going to, to, the, to the Saturday uh, forums. Uh, and so when I get an email, I would place an answer to that person, and, 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 the, and the, that person would kind of talk to another person, and people would calm. It was, it was a calming effect. So when, the ans when, when those questions start getting answered, I think you're going to see less and less people being nervous and 
and, 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 and getting excited over things that really have, have already been solved in a lot of cases. So that's all. Okay, good. Thank you. Jack, have you taken in any of those sessions at all? Or <coughs> I went to the Surrette originally, then I did the reading, and I'm uh, certified to read drawings and blueprints. And so um, I've listened to the presentations, about three and a half hours worth of them, and then listened to the town members. So I chose not to go and confront uh, the developer on his ground, but rather uh, to speak publicly to both you and the developer, okay. as opposed to visit um, his, uh, his little lion's den. Yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> If that's okay with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we can go visit Jack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to those uh, the questions. Uh, yeah, always getting late. And uh, any other questions? Any other business to come before this board? If not, take motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Dana. Okay. Second by Rick. All those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And I appreciate everyone who, who stayed late. One last reminder for the board, autism walk, May 1st. Okay. Tim, can you send the website? Be a, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Parade magazine last week there was a